We'll use the best of psychology to help you be happy, healthy, and most importantly, yourself. I recently received an exceptionally touching email from an anonymous listener who's facing a challenge many of us can relate to. She can't stop eating. For her and all of us who have ever felt powerless against food, listen on for six tips to battle binge eating. But first, here's her message. I can't stop eating. Like crime, my eating mostly happens at night. By the light of day, I have an exemplary diet. But after work or after dinner, I find myself in the pantry, fumbling cookies straight from the sleeve. Last night, I ate a pound of chocolate, a bag of maple glazed nuts, and a box of cookies. While it's happening, I'm not even in control. The cookies call to me, and before I know it, I go numb and something automatic takes over. It's like my body has been hijacked. I feel a mixture of denial and release while it's happening, but afterwards, I hate myself. I feel spent, guilty, and helpless. I think terrible things about myself, like how my husband would be better off married to someone else, how I'm effing up my life, and how there's no hope for me. Did I mention I hate myself? My last physical even showed that my blood sugar is in the pre-diabetes range, but I still can't stop. I've tried all the tricks. Use a smaller plate. Only eat when sitting at a table. Don't eat after 8 p.m. Go for a walk instead, and on and on and on. Don't tell me to try a substitute activity like knitting or some other garbage. I have yards of badly knit scarves to show for my efforts, but it still didn't work. I'm married to a wonderful man. I dare say my soulmate. But he's away for long stretches at a time for his job. He emails me to say goodnight. Since college, I've drifted from one job to another. I get really excited about them at first, but then the shine wears off and I get bored. I've worked in a hodgepodge of fields. I've been an assistant shoe designer, worked on a TV show, helped manage a boutique gym, and worked at a tech startup. But I can never seem to find a place I fit. And in the meantime, I feel like I'm being left behind. I'm worried I'll never find my niche, and I'll never accomplish anything. Something is terribly wrong with me. What is it, and how do I fix it? Whatever it is, sure isn't being fixed by the chocolate. Sincerely, I can't stop eating. Dear, I can't stop eating. Thank you for your brave and honest email. I can hear your frustration and your despair, but the fact that you're reaching out means you have hope and there is hope. You are far from alone in this. 11% of your fellow women and 7.5% of men say they've binged in the last month. Now, while disordered eating starts in many ways, a remark from an authority figure about your body, an angst-ridden teenage decision to lose weight, or as a reaction to an upheaval in life, for you, perhaps getting uprooted after college, disordered eating sticks around through strict manipulation of food and how one deals with stress and negative emotion. There's no surefire regimen for stopping binge eating. Indeed, as we'll see, oftentimes regimens, well-intentioned but rigid diet rules, and equally rigid thinking about yourself, the world, and your future are the true adversaries. To that end, I can't stop eating. Here are six tips to try out. Do what works for you and let the rest go. Tip number one is feel what you feel. This is the best and scariest thing you can ever hope to accomplish. Along with stuffing chocolate, I imagine you may be stuffing loneliness when your soulmate is thousands of miles away. Resentment that all you get is a goodnight email, hopelessness that you'll never find your niche, and insecurity about being left behind. Your body is telling you that everything is not okay. So feel what you feel. Discharge your feelings into a journal. Even if you just write expletives in big black letters across both pages. You know what? It's not pleasant, but you can handle it. Allow yourself to feel sad, angry, or lonely. And then try tip number two. Which is, catch those punishing thoughts and examine them under a bright light. A secret to consider. The thoughts triggering those lousy feelings might not even be true. So let's get specific. You worry you're falling behind, for example. Behind whom? Seriously, make a list of the people you think are tracking your accomplishments and cackling with evil glee or shaking their heads in disappointment. It has to be specific people, 
not everybody or people or my college classmates. And next ask, are they really? Even if the answer is yes, are these people, perhaps a coach you haven't seen in years, a sister who always manages to insult you, or maybe a manipulative boss, worth this torment? To keep putting those cruel thoughts on trial, a psychologist you like and trust can help you shine that bright light of truth on other perfectionistic, all or nothing thoughts like, I'll never find my niche, and I'll never accomplish anything. Under close, compassionate examination, you may find they crumble like a cookie. Tip number three, exercise, but not as punishment or to negate your binges. You are totally right when you write off the tricks as just that, tricks. Tricks are quick fixes that promise more than they deliver. But tools are healthy skills that work for you. It sounds like knitting and walks might have been well-intentioned tricks up to this point. So this is hard, but try exercising because you want to treat yourself well, not because you hate yourself. Use it as a tool to feel better, not as a trick to lose weight, burn calories, negate your binge, or punish yourself. Do an activity you enjoy that makes you feel strong, not one you hate that makes you feel chastised. Tip number four, stop counting. You didn't specifically mention this, I can't stop eating, but it applies to many souls who binge. So counting calories or fat grams or weighing yourself daily often becomes a system of evaluation. If you meet your goal, you're worthy and good. And if you don't, you're a big failure. So instead, try throwing out the whole yardstick of evaluation. Now, without the anchor of calorie counting or a daily weigh-in, you may be left anxious and floating. So tune inside for a new guiding light. Natural, normal eating is governed by hunger. But in souls who binge, that guiding light of hunger and satiety may be down to the embers. It may take a long time to get your body rhythms back, but you can. How to learn to listen to your body? Experiment with the next tip and see if it works for you. Tip number five, keep track of what you eat or don't. Two things that can work wonders for some, but wreak havoc on others are food diaries and structured eating. Try both, but don't be afraid to abandon them if they just create more rules that make you feel worse when inevitably you don't adhere to them perfectly. Under some circumstances, food diaries can be great. Writing down what you eat can turn mindless munching into mindful insights. So log what you eat, but not the caloric content, fat grams, or anything like that. Instead, jot down how you feel when you eat. You may find that your eating is prompted by boredom at your latest job, anxiety that you're falling behind, or resentment about that distance that leads to the goodnight email. These thoughts and feelings are your true adversaries, not the chocolate. Next, structured eating. This is going to the motions of quote, normal eating, even if they feel downright wrong. Structured eating involves planning and eating three meals and two snacks a day. Over time, you'll likely find you binge less because you're less vulnerable to feeling grumpy because you're starving and a mindless graze won't crescendo into a binge. Now, structured eating is not a diet. It's a scaffold with which to rebuild your natural body rhythms. Last is tip number six. This will be a process. This brings me to hating yourself. Ideally, take your thoughts. My husband would be better off married to someone else. I'm effing up my life. There's no hope for me. To a qualified psychologist you like and trust. As great as tips can be, an in-person, real-time conversation is better. Now, the average person with binge eating disorder has struggled with it for four and a half years. And for those out there who have struggled for 10 times that long, don't give up. When you slip, and you will, fellow human, forgive yourself and start up where you left off. You don't start over from square one. No one can take those binge-free days away from you. So have hope, keep seeking compassionate support, and building your toolbox. Thanks for listening. And see you next week for a happier, healthier mind. 